In today's quick Thursday tip, we're gonna talk about managing permissions in SharePoint Online using Power Automate, AKA Flow. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a couple of the built-in actions, right? So there's a stop sharing, there's a start sharing, make sure you understand how they work. And then we're gonna do a little bonus. I'm gonna show you how to use the HTTP action to reset inheritance if you mess it all up. So should be fun, should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, no, not Baby Yoda, the guys above that. In today's show, we're gonna talk about managing your SharePoint Online permissions, right? A lot of us are using SharePoint Online as a data source for our Power Apps or just in day-to-day -day work. And one of the things that comes up a lot of times, like, hey, I wanna be able to manipulate these permissions on the fly. Most commonly, it's because you're using SharePoint as your back end, and you're like, hey, I want everybody to be able to write to this list, but then after they write their data, I want to lock it down to maybe just them or just uh, you know their manager or something like that. So we're going to show you how to do that in this quick little tip. We'll switch over to my desktop and take a look. The first thing I want to do over here on my desktop is just kind of flip over. Let's look at a SharePoint list for a second and just talk about what we're going to replicate. So if you come into SharePoint and you select a specific item, so we'll choose Nicola's record here, and then you hit the little properties guy here or details pane, it loads up all the things about it. And up here at the top, it says who has access and manage access. And so this is where you can see kind of what we're gonna have happen, right? We're gonna have all the different changes come over here. And so maybe the first thing you notice is that because the default permissions for this list is that Power Apps video owners have owner rights and video members have edit rights, you're like, hey, I wanna be able to change that with Flow, right? We wanna break that. So what you would do, is you can go over here to Flow and we're gonna create a new Flow. And so typically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just do a uh, instant cloud flow because I really just want to concentrate on teaching you these actions, not the bigger process, right? These QDs are just about getting in and out with the info you need. So to that end, I'm just going to manually trigger the flow and we're going to call this SharePoint permissions just to make it easy on us. There we go. And then now we'll say create. And so this drops us in a flow where we can manually trigger. Anytime I'm learning something new or testing things, I always make the trigger manually trigger, so I just press a button and go. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna say new step, and you're going to search for your good friend SharePoint. And so then there are all the different SharePoint actions. There's like 30 of them at this point. But what we're after is we're just going to search for access, and really there's three things here, and so these are the three pieces we're gonna learn about today. And so the first thing I want to do is stop sharing that list, right? So we're going to say stop sharing an item or file. What site address? And so we're going to use my Power Apps videos right there. And then it's like, all right, well, what list or library? This is so far super easy. So it's my employees list, what I use for everything. There you go. And then it just wants to know the ID of the item you want to change. So in this case, I can go over here and if we look, I expose the ID column, right? SharePoint auto generates that for every list. So it'll always be there for you. And so we're just going to change Nicola's record, so that's ID1. Now keep in mind, right, we're doing this in a very hard-coded manner, but you could have had your trigger be when an item changes and then reset these permissions or stop sharing. And then in the dynamic content, you would have had that ID available to you, right? But we don't need any of that. So there you go. It's that simple. We're going to say save. And so now they recommend we'll test it. Oh, let's test it, right? Flow got a new UI today. 12, December 23rd seems like a weird day to have new things show up. But they did. We're going to roll with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, I want to test this thing manually. And we're going to say test. And then continue here. And so then run the flow. So this is the nice thing about the, the triggering with this, right, is we didn't have to do anything. Let's click done real quick. Right, we were just able to trigger it by clicking some buttons here instead of generating fake data. One of the reasons I love this. It says it was successful. So we'll go back over here. We'll deselect Nicola's record. We'll select it again. And then we'll click the little info looking thing here. And then, oh, look, manage access. The item has not been shared. And then you notice that the editors are all gone, right? The members group. Perfect, right? Because you can't take away permissions from the site owners. Makes a lot of sense. But we were able to take away the permissions from um, all the other people that had been shared with. Nice. Okay. So then now that we've done that, let's grant permissions. Let's go give Chewy permission to this file. So because we're just learning, we're just gonna go over here, we're gonna edit the same flow. So we'll say stop sharing an item. We'll just add another step. We'll search for SharePoint again. And then we'll click on SharePoint. And then I'm, because I'm lazy, I'm gonna type in access again. And then now we wanna grant access. 
So we click on grant access. We're going to kind of go through the same deal. I wish Flow was smarter and just said, oh, I magically know that you're going to use this same site again, but I kind of get why it doesn't, but I'm just, you know, I'm lazy. So there you go. There's employees. Then it's like, hey, what ID do you want to change? So I'm going to choose one. And so then now it's like, all right, it needs more information, right? To give access, it, you know, take it away, it's like gone. But to give, it needs a little bit more info, right? It's, it's giving season, right? It's my friend gave me that uh, Yoda back there. And so anyway, for the recipients here, well, what I'm going to do, because I want to understand, right? Because later you're going to want to make this dynamic. So it's pretty easy just to be like, hey, search for Chewy. There is Chewy. And so we would give Chewy access. And can we also give it to Ferguson? I don't know. Let's try typing in Ferguson the cat. Okay, so we can give it to multiple people. Now, I immediately say to myself, though, you know, okay, this is great, Shane, you hard coded this, but what if I needed to go fetch this data from somewhere else, right? Or I had dynamic content that was driving this. That's a fair question. So what I was trying to figure out was how did this work? Here's how I figured that out. I click on this little ellipsis here and I say peak code. This will show you everything that is going on. And so you can see that parameter recipients, really all it is is a one big string that was the email address, semicolon, and then the next email address. So that tells us, right, that if we were trying to pass in string data or, well, it would have to be string data, but pulling in data from somewhere else, that we would, when we filled in the dynamic content here, right, which we can just say, switch to this mode, and it shows you, nice, we would need to come up with that string on our own. We've talked about that in other videos, but that's all you had to understand. I like it. Same type of thing for roles down here. So then it's like, hey, can edit, can view, right? These are the normal built-in SharePoint permissions. So let's just choose can edit now, or let's just give them view. Let's be mean. So there you go. So I also can say, you know, Chewy, you have access now. And hopefully I just edited out Chewy barking, but no promises. And then finally notify recipients, right? Do you want them to get a sharing message? Why not? So we fill this out. Now the other thing I would remind you guys, right? I would go back here and peek code because what's interesting to me is that the role value it's right there, right? So this might come up later as you get nerdier with this, which we're not going to get nerdier, but just know that peaking gives you some more info. And that is the underlying code for that edit or view access. So let's say done and let's do another test. And now I'm just going to say, use the recently ran one. Perfect. Save and test. And after a few seconds, it says it was successful. So we'll go back over here to SharePoint. I will click off of this. I found it's kind of easier if you click off back in and do this has access, look at that, Chewy, little view, Ferguson, little view, right? That's what that says. And there you can see the can view, can edit, and stop sharing. So basically those three options are what we're playing with over on the flow side. Perfect. I love this, right? So those are the two key ones, right? Because those are the easy to use ones. Now, when I was doing my testing, I was like, man, I really want to set this thing back to just inheriting permissions. So there's not an action for that. So my super bonus tip for the day is we're going to say new step, SharePoint. Oh, that is a bad spelling of SharePoint, but it still worked. And we're gonna type in access. And so then there's also this SharePoint action called send an HTTP request to SharePoint. So this is something I cover extensively in my advanced Power Apps class. So we aren't gonna like totally break this down, but I want to give you an overview of how to do this one quick thing, right? So what you can do here, We'll choose our same SharePoint site, so Power Apps Videos. And what we want to do is a post, right? So we're going to run an, uh, against the SharePoint REST API. And so we're going to post against that API. And I'm going to paste in this URL, right? So underscore, um, I'm going to start on the left there. There we go. So forward slash underscore API web list, get by title, the name of your list, so in my case, employees and then the items and then the ID of the item you want to do. So that's one, right? We've figured all this out before. And then we're just going to do a slash rest role inheritance and then say open and close parenthesis there at the end. And so by doing this, what it's going to do is it's going to invoke the rest API and it's going to trigger it to set it all back to its default behaviors. And the nice thing about these send an HTTP request to SharePoint, and this is why we cover them so much in my advanced class, is that they're free. They this is a way to call a bunch of the portions of Microsoft's API with Office 365 without going against, um, you know, having to use HTTP action, which costs money or has an additional licensing fee. So now that we did that. If we uncheck this, we check this, we look at manage access, 
we'll see that in the end, it's all back the way that it was to begin with. It's reset to just inherit from its parent, which is the list. That's pretty cool. All right, so there you go. So three quick little actions that will let you build better SharePoint lists. Remember, we use these a lot to manipulate permissions behind the scenes in our Power App scenarios where they're saving data to SharePoint lists. We wanna try and lock it down better. So um, if you need any help, you can always leave me comments below, right? I respond to all of them. I'm usually behind, but that's, that's the story of my life. And um, you know, also remember over at training.powerapps911.com, we have a SharePoint dedicated class. We also have an advanced class if you wanna like really learn the super nerdy stuff of all this. And with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.